Hello everyone, welcome back to the Northwest Geology Guy. This is Scott, your host, and today we're going to be talking about an article that came out in a few different platforms about uh, is the one of Fuca Plate dying. Um, there was a research uh, study done, started in 2015, called the Cascade Initiative, and that's where they went offshore up and down uh, at the plate boundary between North America and the Juan de Fuca plate. And they placed a lot of seismographs up and down there to see what was going on down there at depth. And they noticed uh, down here in uh, central South Oregon, uh, there was a, a giant crack in the plate. And um, they uh, at first didn't know what was going on because the seismic data, data was showing... Uh, an anomaly down there where the earthquakes from around the world were sh weren't showing up uh, the same as it was up and down the rest of the Cascadia and they were noticing that uh, they started to map it out um, with the seismic data and it's about uh, 120 miles wide and 155 miles deep and it's uh, narrower at the top and wider at the bottom. And they believe that this may be the cause for the volcanism in uh, central South Oregon to northern California. Because it's allowing uh, hot, uh, what they call hot material to come up. Well, we know what hot material is. It's magma. Uh, and so that's uh, what caused the... Uh, the volcanism in uh, southern Oregon and northern California and uh, they were saying that uh, they don't know how long it's been there or uh, what caused it but my guess and it's only a guess because uh, they didn't show any of the data just was talking about the study I'd like to see the scientific paper on the study that would give us some more detailed uh, information on what they found uh, but my guess would be that it's been around for a long time. It's not something that just occurred. Um, and that's, you know, the, the title, you know, is the plate dying. Maybe a little overkill. But um, what I think it might be is uh, the Wanda Fuca plate is not a new plate of its own. It's the remnants of the ancient uh, Farallon plate that stretched all the way from Alaska all the way down to South America, at the bottom of South America, all that was one gigantic plate. And as North America, Central America, and uh, South America crossed over it, I mean, uh, North America, not the rest of it, um, it broke up into three different plates, uh, three main plates. But on the Juan de Fuca, you have the Explorer plate on top, the one of Fuca in the center and the Gorda plate on the southern end. And then down in Central America and South America, you have the Cocos plate and the Nazca plate. Uh, those were all part of the Farallon plate uh, that started roughly 200 million years ago as the supercontinent Pangaea started to break up. And But once uh, California started to cross over, uh, the subduction stopped down there. The volcanoes died and weathered away and the magma chambers were forced to the surface and that's why instead of a chain of volcanoes like in the Cascades you have a, a granite uh, batholith and that's nothing more than just a large area of granite and uh, that's what's going to happen to us eventually um, I was talking to uh, I can't remember his last name George he was uh, the expert at the University of Washington on volcanism and uh, he was my uh, discussion group on Facebook and I didn't know who he was and I was trying to school him <laughs> about Mount Rainier uh, is not dying and this and that and uh, one of the moderators uh, John uh, um, Vidali come on to let me know that uh, George is the expert for the UW on this and uh, I guess he must have chuckled because he wasn't letting me know who he was but he loved uh, my enthusiasm and stuff uh, in uh, 
and he said that's what the whole group should be about but that was kind of embarrassing but um getting back to the subject um i think what happened is when the plate was getting tugged down and this is the last little bit of it as you can see down here uh at the beginning of the gorda plate it's very narrow there compared to uh you know the one if you could plate up here uh in just northern oregon we have a lot of plate up here in washington oregon still the subduct but down here uh it's narrowed down and i have a feeling it's it kind of twisted and and fractured uh like a, a a fissure uh basically opened up in it and i have a feeling it's been going uh been like this for a very long time because uh, the southern end of the cascades are, are pretty old too and so I don't think it's anything to worry about, you know, that something major is going to happen. Uh, it's going to separate and float apart or float under. But what I am wondering is if this is why um, they were saying there was a spot on there in that general area of the plate or the subduction zone that was not locked. Well, I guess if you don't have any surface plate uh, under North America to lock... Uh, that may be the reason, but it's pretty new. It's just been out. I haven't heard any rebuttals on it or arguments. Um, you know, it's probably got some holes in there. They're going to have to be, uh, explained and, uh, to make it the scientific community, uh, accept this new, uh, data and theory. But, um, what I'm wondering is, uh, this may be one of the triggers uh, that starts uh, a Cascadia rupture uh, since there's no locking there is that the stress points that uh, um, release uh, the plate and, and cause the the rupture to occur because I know I looked at Chris Goldfinger Dr. Goldfinger's uh, uh, video with a timeline and it shows every um, rupture on it and it, uh, in a red line, it goes up to show how big of a rupture it was and uh, how long ago it occurred. And a lot of them, I remember now, um, didn't go past that. Uh, right in this area here, a lot of them stopped right about in there. And, of course, we've had lots of uh, full ruptures, too. And some that, you know, and it always is kind of funny because it always shows it coming from the, the south going north never from the north going south but you know, I just wouldn't put my money on them. that's the way it's always going to be but um, that's something I'd like to, to find out about is that uh, the trigger for uh, the next Cascadia event but I will update you as I uh, find anything further um, but I would like to also I was going to make another video but I found this just a little while ago that's why it's kind of fresh and everything and I don't have a lot of diagrams they didn't have any diagrams with the article so I just had to go with what I could find this is uh, the best uh, image I could find that showed the uh, top view of the one of Fuca plate but the video I was going to do was uh, I've ordered uh, my gold pans I'm going to start prospecting for gold here in uh, Western Washington and I was extremely disappointed yesterday when I came home and found out uh, the starter kit I got was more like a Fisher Price uh, toy. Uh, the pans were really small. The classifying screens uh, that screen out your dirt, you can get them in all the sizes from, oh God, half inch all the way down to uh, 100, 200 mesh, very tiny. And um, with the classifiers, they... Uh, if you say somebody says a number four instead of saying the fraction a number four means there's four holes per linear inch um, I've watched thousands of prospecting videos uh, hard mine hard rock mine uh, uh, mining uh, gold panning um, crevicing the the bedrock all kinds of stuff like that so um, uh, I thought, you know, before I get any older and disabled, I thought I was going to uh, go out there. So now I'm, uh, me and my wife decided today, since I was going to teach my grandkids and uh, 
my kids, well, my kids will use the newer equipment, but that we'll just keep this kit for the, uh, the grandkids and, um, at least for the two younger ones. And, um, it might make it easier for them to, uh, to pan uh, a smaller pan of, uh, of dirt or concentrates, we call it after you screen it down. And, um, I already have a spot picked out, had picked out, seems like six months ago, but it's only been a couple weeks. But I'm going up to uh, my cousin's spot up in the mountains. Uh, that was uh, his dad and my uncle's uh, house. It sits right on the river, and the river bends right around the the property. And all you have to do is just walk through his yard, go about 50 feet through the beginning of the forest, and you're right at the, the river bank on an inside turn. And why I'm excited about that, there's a big gravel bed there of a pretty good river rock, pretty good sized river rock. And on the inside turn, the current uh, drops off as it starts to go straight again. And well, if there's any gold flying uh, down the river like that, it will drop out uh, on the inside bend of a, of a turn. So, and also too, that the river rock acts like a... Um, miner's moss moss there we go <laughs> that uh traps the gold it's like you know you can see uh, like very thick carpeting you know traps of dirt in it well that's how uh the river rock does it sticks in the rocks and keeps it from moving and gold is uh uh 13 or 19 percent or times heavier than water so it always drops uh out of the stream where there's no current to keep it going and so i'm really excited about that i have a, another couple of spots on the way up uh, to my cousin's house i want to stop and uh, prospect a little bit there because when you, if anybody's ever interested in doing this uh before you get all gung-ho and start racing around uh, your state or states uh, is to do some prospecting go up there with a pan and a classifier and uh, a shovel in your scoop and just look for certain areas of the rivers or uh, if you're gonna go uh, see on a hillside where you see uh, a quartz vein or uh, heavy bedrock uh, exposed to the surface like that look for uh, any veins of uh, um, crystals uh, like quartz and um, oh there's a lot of like uh, heavy mineralization of iron and uh phosphates and stuff like that where it starts to leach out and and stained um you know you can break it open and take a piece of it and smell it you can smell the sulfur in there um sulfides and uh quartz uh are usually uh well associated with uh gold and silver but i know up here uh we don't have very much silver at all but um I will be doing more videos on that to let you guys know how I'm doing and uh, and teach you where to look. Um, there's oodles of places to go. Like they say, there's river and there's gold in every river uh, everywhere. But you may pan a lifetime in a river and, and, and find no gold. It's, you know, that bear of gold. But every river will have gold in it. Especially since it usually starts in a mountainous region and uh, gravity takes it downhill and empties in the ocean. So that's uh, something to look forward to. Uh, wish me luck. And I'd love if everybody uh, would subscribe. Uh, give me a thumbs up. And do not forget to hit the, the bell uh, for notifications of further videos. And always feel uh, welcome to leave a comment. Um, I'm very good about responding back, and, and my regular guys know that. Um, I stay around usually for a couple hours uh, until I have to hit the hay to go to work. And uh, we'll re read your comments, respond back. Um, I still respond back from my first videos uh, nine months ago. So anytime I see a notification of somebody left a comment, I immediately go uh, into my page, read the comment, and most always we'll leave a, a comment back and give it a thumbs up uh, so you guys all take care uh, i apologize for the few people that clicked on my first video and found out it was only three seconds long 
I don't know why uh, when I was uploading the video it said it was an 11 minute video so oh well I like talking as you guys know so I just went ahead and started over again from scratch so you guys all take care and I'll talk to you soon all right good night now